in general, I guess. How's it going? It's it's going very well, and it's uh, bottom line is I'm busier than I can <laughs> than I can breathe, than I can even hold on to. It's crazy. Now, Jeff Scott Soto, uh, would you ever imagine that in 2021 life gets busy like that? You know, one could only dream. I mean, I've seen so many inter interviews, and I've said it even myself, but I've seen interviews with you know members of Queen or the Rolling Stones where they ask them, even when they're young and doing interviews, they say, you know, do, do you see yourself doing this for a long time to come? And they said, eh, if I can get about five or ten years out of it, that would be fantastic. But I, you know, I, I'll only take what I can get. And the fact that I'm still here almost 40 years later, it's uh, it's fantastic. That's unbelievable, you know, and it's like you're still looking good. You're sounding great. And I mean, that's a blessing in itself as well. Well, thank you for that. And uh, again, I, I take so much pride in what I do and how I do it. I'm going to do everything I can to retain it and to, you know, just to, to keep people happy and wanting to be interested in me. And Jeff, you got the Duets Collection Volume 2. Now, this is a real treat for all fans of, you know, all the, the bands you've touched with, you know, and yeah. like, tell me about, you know, the idea of going and just doing this. I mean, was it certainly just for the pandemic's version of it? Uh, it started that way. And obviously once we were doing it and we, we saw what we had in our hands, it turned into an absolute labor of love. And if anything, it, because I do a lot of these songs on my life set anyways. So I get to revisit my past you know, pretty much, but to revisit my past in a way where you have to meticulously redo something that's so embedded in people's heads, you know, the, the, the people that bought any of these songs or any of this music in the original format, you don't want them to walk away going, oh, the original is way better. And that's going to happen anyways. But that's one, one of the reasons I tried to kind of stick to script. I didn't want to veer off and do something that was too left field from what the original versions were. And, and even the way I'm singing, I'm not doing anything too different from the original versions. I've, maybe my voice is a little different or I have a little different approach overall, but these are staples in my life and my career. And the only thing that I wanted to be different and reflective of difference is what the singers that I, I brought on to do this with me would do in their, in their, their case and scenario. I wanted them to be them to shine as them, not to just copy what I did. And, and, you know, everybody's just, repeating history for the sake of just trying to be creative and trying to come up with something interesting. Yeah. Like make, making a cover, you want to make it, you know, yourself and, you know, unique. And certainly when you are, the, you are the voice of the cover, it's, right. um, it's something to, to think about, you know, to, to exactly. do it, represent it sort of way. Right. Exactly. And, 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 you know, like I said, it turned into a labor of love. It turned into something I never expected to, to, to actually be as proud as I am about, because again, you, you're revisiting something that's so close to people already, the classic versions of any song, they're always going to go back and say that was better because that's what they remember. It, it meant something to them when they first heard it. So right. that's how they're always going to hear it. And to hear a new version or redo of it, they go, okay, that's cute. That's nice. It, I, I still prefer the original. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, finding the musicians to play on the album, let's say, where where did you go looking for that? Well, I didn't look too, too outside the box. I stayed within the confides of my comfort zone. And that's the, the members of my band Soto. And, and also they've been a part of the JSS thing for so many years. And that's exactly what I was saying. They they've played a lot of a lot of, if not all of these songs at some point or time with me. So they know the songs more or better than if I just brought it to other musicians, say, hey, learn this. I want you to play on this. I wanted the musician side of the things to be kind of dormant, to be less focused on, because I want the the performances of the singers that I'm singing alongside with to be the one the, the one thing that people are concentrating on more so than, oh, he got this, he got Bumblefoot on this part and he got Billy Sheen on that. I wanted just the music to be the platform for the, the singers to, to shine and to even be discussed. And like choosing the singers to do it with you, like this is going to be a little bit of um, thinking on your part to, to say, let's get him on this and, and that and that. Or right. A lot of stuff to calculate there, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And, and, and yes and no, because as a, I, I kind of played the role of a casting director, so to speak, uh, when I was choosing which singers would fit with certain songs, instead of just saying, Oh, that's good enough. Oh, I know he can sing that. I know that would sound good. I made sure meticulously I used the the format of that voice 
would actually be designed if I wrote that song for that artist or that band. Mm -hmm. And also there's also even deeper reasons and, and uh, ideas that I had behind choosing certain people for certain songs, because they go beyond just the fact that the voices work for the songs. It was like with all that stuff, I'm sure it's, it was fun to do and, you know, to, to look at the product, how it ended up, how much yeah. effort do you put into like finding the perfect mix for it? Let's say in, and, you know, mastering it and, and releasing it. Yeah, it, it, that that's all trial and error. The, the one thing I hate the most is the end the end game because you have to find the right sequencing. You have to find the the, the ebbs and flows of, of the, the thing going up and down and having, I, I like hills and valleys with my sequencing. So most people put, in the old days, the, uh, the, the weakest songs used to be at the end of the album and the strongest songs would be at the top. Right. And then you think about, well, think about Bohemian Rhapsody. That literally was the last song on side two of, of the night at the opera, but it ended up being the, one of the biggest songs of that band's career. So the, I don't necessarily choose the last song based on it being the weakest. I choose it based on how the album is flowing from beginning to end. The sequencing, like even when you look at old Pink Floyd stuff, it was very important. And Absolutely. It's um, something people probably don't look at as much because we're, we are living in a singles world. It seems. You know, yeah, and, and a lot of bands really didn't have that option either. They they were pretty much told this was it was chosen for them because there are people that more experts on that kind of stuff and and knowing how an album should be sequenced. But when the bands themselves know it has to be a certain way, then there's a vision behind it. There's a reason behind it. So and, and I'm I'm fortunate enough to I'm given the uh, the luxury of being able to do that myself, especially all these years. And Jeff, are you um, seeing shows coming up in your future or are you playing shows right now? How, how is that going? I'm in the middle of finishing a, a run with Jason Beeler, my, my uh, acoustic show buddy that I do these, these gigs with the guy from Saigon Kick. I'm right. actually flying off tonight for uh, two shows in Florida this weekend. And then we, we end our tenure for the year the next week. We get uh, the, we're done with the, the entire thing at that point. So um, yeah, it's as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm slowly getting back out there. I know we still we have TSO that's in the in the works, and I'm I'm hoping nothing messes that up because we we just want to, we want to get back to normal. <laughs> it's it's a no brainer. We don't want to keep doing this. It's 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 killing everybody. We need to get back to normal. Absolutely. And like, let's say for your discography, you played on a lot of albums. You work with tons of artists. I mean, currently, how many bands or artists are you you know working with? Um, I'm working with a lot of people, but it, it's not like I'm in so many bands at this, at this point in time, I'm really literally only in two. I'm in Sons of Apollo and Soto. Everything else I'm doing is they're either projects or the things I do when I can do them on the side. And, you know, I'm just fortunate that I get to do all of this music and have all these outlets. I have the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, which, which gives me a chance to do something completely different from my normal career. Right. And so, yeah, as far as bands are concerned, I'm really only in two. So basically, when you do go play, let's say, with Trans-Siberian Orchestra, it's like a little change of taste for you. And like you, your interests all, all of a sudden can be like, oh, I'm learning something new. I'm more interested in this for now. And just oh, yeah. expand is, your, your knowledge. TSO has, has, has given me a lot of different musical challenges that I would have never thought I had. And one of the early things I, I got from Paul on the old rest is soul, the, uh, the, the founder of TSO, as he told me when I said, man, I don't know if this is really my wheelhouse. I don't know if this is something that I can make believable. After the first 20 minutes in the studio together, he goes, you have no idea how much you're actually so suitable for this. You, um, and he brought it out of me. He taught me something I didn't know I already had. Wow. And then, and that's got to make you feel pretty um, precious and, and, grateful well yeah and, and the fact that as we were just tapping on i get something else from this something else from a, a a line of creativity that i normally wouldn't have and i get to bring it somewhere else i've taken a lot of uh portions of what i got from tso and brought them to sons of apollo and brought them to other projects and other albums i've been doing because there's a there's a level of I guess, acting involved. It's kind of like the musical theater of the Broadway uh, vibe. When you're singing a lyric, sometimes you're not, you're not supposed to be singing as you. Sometimes it's, you're supposed to be presenting a story and it's, be it's better to get, get behind a character that's giving you as kind of like a storyteller when you're actually singing the song. It, it makes the song a little more special. 
And Jeff, let's say for your solo stuff, you know, you, you've been releasing some great videos lately. And I mean, is the trend going to continue? We're going to see lots of stuff, you know, in 2022, maybe later 2021. Well, uh, at the moment, the only ones I can I can vouch for are the ones that I'm, I have control over. And obviously, that's the duets album, which comes out tomorrow. And I'm finishing my new solo album, which comes out uh, early next year to celebrate my uh, 20 year anniversary with Frontiers. So those two releases are the ones, the two things I can actually put my foot down and say those are guaranteed. The other ones I have, I have no idea with all the things that I've done, with all the things that I've uh, been a part of during the lockdown and quarantine. I don't know when those particular things are going to be start is going to start coming out, but uh, there probably will be quite a bit of material coming out <laughs> in the course of the next year and a half or two. It's unbelievable your discography. How big is it now? I mean, do you have even a, an idea? Because it, it, no, it, I, I it, think it's. Content. I think I've reached. I think I've, by now I've reached a hundred albums that I've sung lead vocals on. Not a hundred bands or a hundred projects, just a hundred albums. If you want to, you know, everything. If you include everything from singing on Joel Hoekstra's albums and and other people where I'm not the singer for the band. But if you add everything I've done, including soundtracks and re anything that's been released, I think it's easily about a hundred records. Wow. So uh, eventually, in like let's say in twenty years from now, Guinness will be contacting you. Well, if I'm still around, I I'd love to hear from them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, it's been a pleasure talking to you tonight, and I uh, hope you, everything goes good with this album, Duets Collection Volume 1. It sure is a rocking album, and just keep up great work, man. Thank you so very much, and uh, thank you for your time as well that we can talk about this stuff. All right, you have a good one. Thank you, brother. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.